Now we will look at the shift of people in an organization from having narrow and prescriptive functions to taking much broader roles. Effectively, when people with narrow functions are told precisely what to do and how to do their work, they are reduced to only tools of the organization. And if we replace the strict functions with broad roles, people will become more creative and adjust the techniques or tools used in work to increase value delivery to the customers and bring better business results to the organization. What happens to an organization where people have narrow functions? Although people are doing their work, they are not happy and are not really engaged in work, and thus the organization is not efficient. People are an important part of the organization. An organization with narrow functions is a system that encourages certain behaviors and discourages others based on functional prescriptions. People who don't behave as expected take a personal risk of being punished, even if they intend to improve or correct things. Therefore, this is a system that needs to be changed. First of all, we need to understand the characteristics of functions and roles. Functions prescribe how to do the work without letting people know why, while roles leave people the freedom of deciding how to do their work themselves based on good knowledge of why. The fact that functions are narrowly defined and the tasks strictly segregated discourages teamwork and mutual help between functions since helping other people implies taking the risk of doing something that's not prescribed in one's function. It is also difficult to distribute work with efficiency among different functions, since workflow is slow and handovers are not smooth. While with flexible roles, people usually have ambiguous multiple functions and work with fluidity by voluntarily helping each other in teamwork and adjusting their roles from time to time to accelerate workflow and improve efficiency. Consequently, the difference between traditional functions and flexible roles is also reflected in the deliverables, since narrow functions focus on technical results while broad roles focus on business value. It's a mistake to think that all the functions are ready to be replaced by roles. Then what and who are ready to do so in reality? In terms of work, if it is something for which we cannot predict how to reach the objective, it takes a role to do the work. Similarly, work for which attitude and belief are as important as competence is also better done by a flexible role. In terms of people, in reality, many people still prefer to be told precisely what to do and how to do and how they will be evaluated at work. These are not people ready to take a role. Those who can accept the ambiguity of functions and are eager to learn through making mistakes, that is when the organization allows people to make mistakes, of course, are the ones ready for assuming roles instead of functions. How to define a role? Let's look at an example. There is a client who is in a situation where someone is needed to rapidly validate a business or technological opportunity by experimentation. Since the existing functions and processes are not ready for the exploration at all, there is the need of establishing a broad, action-oriented role to take the task. Firstly, we should avoid giving this role a vague name that indicates how, such as analyst or advisor of something. Instead, give him a name that is why-oriented, like opportunity explorer, etc. In terms of belief and attitude, think what it takes for someone to become an opportunity explorer. Other than the basic competences, this person must really believe that innovation is crucial for the future of the organization and he must also have such an attitude as to want to participate in the experimentation and not be afraid of making mistakes. Of course, the role also needs necessary resources to succeed, including access to the relevant information and people that can provide him with proper support. Lastly, it's easy to understand that people with certain profiles are more suitable than others to succeed in such a broad role, such as a product manager, a designer, or an architect, etc. Again, while it's important that they can bring the necessary competences to succeed in the role, it's more important that they have the right belief and attitude to learn and succeed through experimentation. The majority of the organizations are composed of mainly specialists for narrow functions. Therefore, it's difficult for them to find people to take broad and meaningful roles. 
What they need to do is to enlarge the competences of people, as shown in the image. The frying pan and the saucepan on the right part allow us to do all that the eight utensils on the left side can do together, perhaps in a less elaborate way, but they will work all the same. Similarly, what we want in an organization of collaboration is to have a certain number of good generalists rather than only specialists for specific functions. How can we enlarge the competences of functions? We can do so based on the different steps of production process. For example, an analyst can become a designer with some effort. Similarly, we can do so based on functional expertise. For example, an expert in change management can perhaps also become an excellent coach in this domain. We can also enlarge narrow functions competences based on business areas. Like combining people working in house insurance and mortgage loans, or based on management field, for example, a team leader may learn to become also a project manager. We can see that when we have narrow functions, the path of work may be essentially a sequence of handovers, and therefore is very fragile. If any change or problem happens, people get stuck. Whereas when we have broad roles, the work path can take different forms. Which makes us much more resilient to changes and able to adjust to changes more rapidly and easily. For the majority of the companies, only 20% of the needs should be met with in-depth expertise, which means we need generalists who are competent in multiple domains more than we need people that are super specialized in a single domain. The more we use in-depth expertise, the more we tend to have unnecessarily complex solutions. Take IT for example. For a long time, people working in this field have been highly specialized in a certain area, and they have always had the tendency to choosing technological solutions that are over complex, resulting in many business solutions not appreciated by the clients at all. One of the challenges faced by organizations today is that there were essentially two axes in the chart of career progression: the hierarchy and the functional expertise. Meaning that, in order to be better rewarded, one has to become either a manager or a senior specialist in something. But what we really need are some good generalists. That is, we need the third X in the career chart: versatility. Meaning that people should be rewarded for their adequate level of competence in a series of domains. In another word, versatility should be appreciated. Unfortunately, people who are polyvalent or versatile are still currently not rewarded in most organizations. How can we initiate the shift from narrow functions to roles? One of the ways of doing so is to promote versatile career path. We can also create a role based on a new function. For example, many organizations have the vision of integrating artificial intelligence in their products or services. For which it's better to create broad roles responsible for it for people who have passion in the task. We can also remove the formal functions within the squad and replace them with roles that team members can choose to play. Similarly, we can initiate the shift by systematizing and rewarding the transfer of competences. For example, every year someone may acquire some new competence as an apprentice, and in exchange, he can teach someone else what he is good at as a tutor. In this way, we can progressively create more and more generalists by way of healthy collaboration among people in the organization.